Google I.O. is finally here. It's today. So all the talk about Google I.O., all the talk about the Pixel Fold's coming, the Pixel 7a is coming, everything, all that stuff, it ends today. It's finally going to be here. Well, at least they're going to show us. So what all should we expect today with Google I.O.? And there's about five different things that I think are important to talk about that we're going to expect today. So first, I mean... This is the most important one, the Pixel Fold. Uh, everybody's been talking about the Pixel Fold. I've talked about it. It's been the big topic of conversation. Why? Because, well, foldable phones are exciting. And some people think Google's crazy. Some people are excited that Google's entering this space. And now we will truly have official competition for the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold phones here in the U.S. So that's one of the biggest things. And, you know, I talk about this all the time. Competition is so important when it comes to the smartphone world because if there's nobody pushing anybody else, challenging anybody else, selling things cheaper, doing things different, you're just going to keep getting the same stagnant, same old, same old over and over again, which is what we've seen with Samsung for the last few years. So, Pixel Fold, super exciting. I even went ahead and bought a case for it. So, there's not a whole lot of cases available out there on the internet. Just going to tell you that right now. Uh, the estimated launch date is going to be like June 27th or something like that. So, I would expect over the next couple of weeks we'll see some more pop up. Uh, I did buy this one. It's Caseology. It's a Parallax. And I'm a big fan of the Parallax case. I bought it for a lot of different devices. So, just so you can get an idea, I wanted to show this off dimension-wise because when you look at the images that we've seen on the Pixel Fold, we know that it's shorter than the Z Fold. We know it's wider than the Z Fold. So just for comparison's sake, this is the Z Fold, Z Fold 4. This is the case that's going to go on the Pixel Fold. So if you take a look at that, you can see there's quite a tremendous difference there in height and also in width. And I think it's going to make for a really exciting phone. It looks a lot uh, dimension-wise, like the Oppo Find N2 to me, and that's great because that's my favorite design, and I've been waiting a long time for this, so I'm excited. I'm going to buy the Pixel Fold. Uh, I hope they give it to me. That would be great, <laughs> uh, but I will buy it if they don't send it to me because I'm part of the Team Pixel program, and likely they'll send me the Pixel 7a. I don't know about the tablet. Uh, they sent me the watch last year, and they usually send me one of the phones. So usually I get the A series and then in the fall they'll send me like the Pro series. So we'll see what happens. I, I don't know. There's no guarantees in this life. So we'll see what happens. But whatever they don't send me I'm going to buy. Because of course you guys know that I cover the stuff on this channel. So Pixel Fold I'm excited about it. Uh, the other thing Pixel 7a. It's been leaked to death. And it's funny because it's the A series phone. And there's been a lot of controversy surrounding this phone because well it's supposed to be the value price phone. But the rumor on the street is it's going to sell for $499 MSRP. Some folks were even saying last minute $599, which I think is crazy. But yeah, if it comes in at $499, it's going to have some serious problems because the Pixel 7 is basically about that now, right? And the Pixel 7 is a better phone based off of everything that we know. So it would make no sense that the A series would be better than the primary numerical series because that's never happened. And then they're charging so closely to it. So that tells me... They're either going to stop selling the 7 and try and get rid of them, or they're going to have some fundamental changes with the 8 this fall and will probably increase the price on that, which I'm not I'm not crazy about that at all. Uh, that's one of the biggest things we've seen with the Pixel phones is value. Like performance, flagship, premium quality, and value. Go get a Pixel 7 for $599 as opposed to a S23 for $799. Or go get a Pixel 7 Pro for $899 as opposed to a S23 Ultra for $1199. They're undercutting the competition by two, three hundred dollars. So it, it just seems kind of backwards. And I think, I don't know, I don't want to speculate too much. We'll find out today. Uh, and then new color is supposed to be the blue color, which I think looks great. The, the rumored coral color. And yeah, I like the 7 Series devices. I like the A Series devices. And I think this will be a big A Series phone if people want to go ahead and get it. But the other word on the street is, is that they might actually be keeping the 6A on board. And likely, my guess is they might just keep it till the fall to sell and just get some more Google devices in people's pockets. I think that's really what it's designed for. So we'll see what happens. And yeah, so 7A, Pixel Fold, those are the two big things. The third thing, the Pixel Pad or the tablet whatever it's going to be called. Um, yeah, it got announced at Google I.O. last year, and we were expecting it at some point in time this year, but it's still not here. So unless they have like an imminent launch, like, hey, here's the Pixel, bat, Pixel Pad, you can get it in stores next week, then I'll be scratching my head after the event because why are you going to tell me about a year ago 
that's going to be available this year to tell me this year that it's still coming. So we'll see whenever it shows up. But I think that's going to be good. Google really has been putting a lot of effort and time and money into trying to build out their ecosphere. So to be able to have a Pixel Pad, a Pixel Phone, a Pixel Watch, a Pixel Foldable, Pixel Earbuds, all these things, there's a whole lot of stuff that's coming down the pipeline and that's really building out this ecosphere on the Google side. And I'm excited about it. So that's another thing. And then also, we are probably going to see the Pixel 8. Yes, my guess is we're going to see the Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro. They'll probably leak them. Uh, they kind of set this standard last year with showing off the Pixel 7 and the 7 Pro, which was interesting. It was really exciting. Everybody was like, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And that's cool. I mean, I'm, I'm always about seeing cool, shiny new things. So we'll see if that actually happens. But I'm pretty sure they're going to show it off. Uh, and then the last thing, oh, actually two things. So they're supposed to be supposedly, uh, a new Pixel Watch, and there were some more leaks on that the other day. I mean, this came out of nowhere. Uh, a lot of folks started asking about a, a week or two ago if I was expecting a new Pixel Watch, and I honestly didn't expect one until, like, next year, uh, just because of, well, Google's not very fast with this stuff. So I was kind of thinking we'll see Pixel Watch 2 next year, but there's some leaks and renders and stuff pointing to it might be coming out this fall with the Pixel 8, which, I mean, that's when the other one came out last year. So it would be interesting to see, and... Yeah, uh, I, I'm all about it. It's because the battery life is not so great on the Pixel Watch for me. So if they give us a Pixel Watch 2, improve the battery life and shore up some other stuff and kind of have some nice thoughtful refinements, it could go a long way. Like If they do with the Pixel Watch 2 from the Pixel Watch 1, what they did with the Google Tensor 1 to the Tensor 2 and the Pixel 6 to the Pixel 7, I think that that could be pretty meaningful and kind of disruptive in the Android department because as much as we like the Samsung Galaxy Watch 5 Pro, which I love mine, they just don't really inspire a whole lot in the watch world, right? I mean, there's just not a whole lot in the Android watch world where people go, oh my gosh, that's the watch. So I think it's still up in the air to be a, a title holder there. So there's that. And then Google's Bard. So if you've been paying attention, I mean, you can't help but not because it's been all over the place with chat GPT and generative AI and all that stuff. So Google has their own thing called Google Bard. And I think one of the next big steps, and I think they've been planning on this for a while, if you know and you pay attention to a lot of Google and their core tenants and how they do business, the whole AI thing, machine learning, and computational photography and all that stuff, plus being the best assistant that you can get on your phone, all that stuff I think is going to tie in with BARD. And I think it's going to be interesting. I think they're going to show off a lot of this stuff during Google I.O., talk about it, talk about its capabilities. And I would really am looking forward to this because I want somebody who actually does this for a living. Like They, they basically create <laughs> AI, right? I want to see them get up and talk about the real practicality of using it, how it can be helpful in day-to-day -day life, what it can do for you, as opposed to, oh yeah, I use ChatGPT to write my essays, right? I mean, yeah, that's cool and all uh, if you like to try and circumvent the Scholastic system and, and cheat, but <laughs> yeah, I think there are some better real-world applications for what we can do and somebody to stand up and say, look, this is what you can do with this, this is why it's amazing, this is why we're working on it. And I think it's going to be the first fully integrated setup into a phone. And I think that's one of the important reasons for the Tensor chip. So, yeah, lots of cool things. Oh, hopefully they talk about the Tensor 3. That would be nice, too, because we'll expect that, of course, in the Pixel 8. But overall, I think Google I.O. is going to be a big success. I think it's going to be the biggest Google I.O. They've ever, they've ever had. All these products are going to get announced, some launched, some speculative talk about for later on down the year. And then, of course, all the stuff they'll talk about with Android 14 as well. So, yeah. I like Google I.O. Uh, one day I'd like to go, uh, but yeah, they still haven't invited me, so I don't know. They probably don't like the fact that I like say things that they should fix and like don't appreciate them doing with their phones. But anyway, uh, I'm more than happy to continue doing that. But one day, one day I would like to get there. I think it would be cool to go to this Google I.O. mecca and see everything live and in person. One day. It's on my wish list. But for now... We'll be watching it from home. I'll be covering it. I'll have some recap stuff. I'm going to talk about this because, of course, I talk about the Pixel products all the time. And that's it for now. So, yeah, let me know what you're excited about. Go to the comments section. Let's talk about it. Let me know what you're excited about when it comes to Google I.O., what is on the top of your list, and we'll go from there. But, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please, of course, hit the like and the subscribe button and the little notification bell if you want updates when new videos come out. And as always, thanks for being here. I appreciate you watching. Thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch this video. It means a lot to me. Thank you for your support. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time.